Michael, the question of AI consciousness has burst into the public square in terms of its, uh, its importance. And normally that means uh, it'll fade uh, in importance. Uh, I don't think it will fade because to me, it is a deeply probative question, not just about AI and whether it'll take over the world or has moral rights or mm. whatever, but deeply probative of the nature of consciousness itself. So uh, from your view, from the Catholic Church's point of view, how do you view the question of AI consciousness? So I agree, this question of AI consciousness is fascinating for all of us, and I think very valuable uh, for society to reflect upon, because I think the more we reflect on AI consciousness, the more we reflect on our own consciousness and possibly the consciousness of other beings. Now, I am suspicious of AI consciousness because at least in our experience thus far, it seems that consciousness is very much tied to a particular biological system. And here I refer both to human beings like us and also to non-human animals. So I suspect that this common behavior that we see, conscious acts, is grounded in a, some sort of common biological framework. So I'm skeptical of us being able to achieve an AI disembodied version of this or a kind of alternative silicon embodiment of AI consciousness. That being said, there's still a lot to reflect on because I think we will get better at achieving convincing, compelling imitations of AI consciousness. And I have been doing a lot of work lately in analyzing the phenomenon of artificial intimacy. We speak of artificial intelligence, but we don't often speak as much about artificial intimacy. So what happens when our AI systems are not only helping us to translate better or to uh, turn in our doctoral dissertation sooner, but they're actually becoming our best friends, our companions, or even our lovers? And I think there are a lot of economic motivations for making AI systems that give the appearance of human consciousness. And I really have no doubt that we will get better at that. We will become more sophisticated. But it seems that it's, it's going to be very important for us, for our hearts, for our mental well-being, to distinguish well that behavioral outward third-person performance from that first person interior lived experience of consciousness. So I think that while we may not get the real thing, we will still get an ever increasingly attractive, interesting, compelling imitation that will have real world impact on actual human beings. Are you saying that first person inner sense consciousness is in principle, in not in principle impossible uh, outside of an embodied uh, situation? I, I'm very skeptical of us reaching that point. Uh, it's, it's quite difficult because we're, we're new in this game, if you will, to completely exclude that in principle. Um, but it raises a lot of questions then about how do we even determine the presence of that AI consciousness if we already know that we are good at gathering information that will enable us to imitate the outward behavior. I think we know that the outward behavior will, will certainly pass any so-called Turing test. That, that was the old way of determining whether consciousness was there. If, if uh, right. double blind people can't discern between the, the uh, artificial and the human, then, then it passes and it's conscious. Well, and now we properly have rejected that because right. AI, if not already has, will very quickly pass the Turing test very easily right. uh, on your, you know, uh, it'll be on your cell phone very, very quickly, just like the, the chess programs on your cell phone can, you know, beat any, any combination of grandmasters. Um, but the, you know, the deeper question is the in principle question, is it forever impossible? Because if it's just a, a question of bi biological em, 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 uh, uh, embodiment and it, some sort of an inactivism of interacting with the environment in some way. Those are all physical kinds of descriptions. 
and the inactivism community are generally materialists. Right. They, they're, but they're interactional materialists, to, yes. to uh, oversimplify, perhaps. Um, so if, if that's the case, ultimately that can be uh, simulated or, or reverse engineered because right. of it's all physical. Right. And so if, if you're saying that AI consciousness is, is not possible in principle, then there has to be something other than a physical world uh, that you deal with. It, 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 yes. Yes, I think that's a, a good distinction to make. If you're working from a kind of computational or a functionalist model, that there are many other models that would allow for us to simply design a different substrate and imitate the, the right a system a, a perform the right functions. Right. This is where I think that the tradition of the church, building upon a tradition uh, before the, the the coming of Christ, um, thinking of Aristotle and and some of the other ancient philosophers, uh, I think that tradition becomes very helpful here because there's a long-standing reflection on what it means to be a living being and how certain beings are in sold, that there's a principle of life that distinguishes between that which is uh, mechanical, that which is an artifact, and that which is living. And in our experience, we find this, this consciousness in certain living beings and not in artifacts. So perhaps there, that's the most promising path of reflection to see if, if, is it helpful for us to think in those terms of identifying that principle of life that gives unity and integration and direction uh, to the movement proper to that kind of being, is that principle indispensable to have conscious experience? And, and that is a great question, uh, but obviously Aristotle had no idea of the atomic theory and how right. things would, how things uh, in a micro level can combine together to have the wetness of water, right. uh, because you can now show how the the bonding angles between the hydrogen and the oxygen atoms would lead it in the aggregate to a feeling of wetness. I mean, you can right. go through that. It's complex, but right. you can do that. And the question is, can you do that for uh, for consciousness? And therefore, if you can, if, then AI, in principle, can become conscious. Right. And and so I think that it's it's promising to reflect on perhaps what distinguishes artifacts from from living beings and seeing if if the reflection on, on the soul as a principle of life, whether that be uh, souls of uh, non-humans or, or of humans, if that's a, a helpful line of reflection. And then also it's helpful to see, well, what sort of consciousness would we even attribute to these other beings? Is it more the consciousness comparable to what we find in non-human animals? Is it the type of consciousness that raises to the level of profound self-consciousness of, of humans? Now, from a more strictly theological perspective, I'm especially skeptical of us designing AI systems that reach that level of human self-consciousness that would imply some sort of uh, spiritual, immaterial soul. Um, from a theological perspective, it seems as though human beings have a very unique role uh, in, and responsibility in the plan of creation, in the plan of salvation, and call to a very particular relationship with God. If we were to introduce those other beings, I think the theologians would, these other conscious AI beings, the theologians would all scatter to the Vatican to figure <laughs> out what to do, to, to decide whether we need to evangelize these individuals, whether they have rights or duties or responsibilities. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not expecting us to reach that level. It does seem for philosophical and theological motives that it's highly unlikely that there's something unique about uh, human beings and something unique about biological embodiment, but it does raise a lot of questions about what happens when we're at the very least faced with what seems to be consciousness, even what seems to be human level consciousness. And I think that will radically transform our legal system and, and our view of the world. So it, I think it also begs the question of, do we really want to introduce these sorts of problems? Are we ready to address them? Are we ready to make firm decisions about what, if any, rights uh, to attribute to these beings and what role they have in interacting with us humans?